Uh, so hello and welcome. Um, I'm uh, Jeremy Stoller, or Jay Stoller, on Drupal.org. Uh, I'll be talking about user experience design and the administrative interface. Um, and uh, please forgive me if I'm a little slow this morning, but it is very early in the morning. Uh, so uh, I come at this from a designer's perspective, and uh, although uh, I've been getting significantly deeper into code development in the last few years. Um, um, really, everything I do is about trying to craft a good user experience. Um, and whether I'm designing a website or designing an exhibit at the Science Center, it's the same thing. Um, uh, trying to figure out what, what the users want and, and make sure that they come away happy. Um, uh, I think with the rise, uh, well, I'd say you, you, normally uh, when we think about user experience, we're looking at it from the uh, visitor's perspective to a website. Um, but I think it's important for us to also um, keep in mind the administrators um, and content maintainers uh, who have to use the back end of our websites. Um, there's actually a fair amount of crossover often between those two. Um, but uh, I think it's common for the, because it is the back end, um, for uh, the content maintainers to sort of get short shrift sometimes. Um, and one of the great things, I think, with the rise of content management systems like Drupal is that it's really opened up the field uh, as far as who can maintain a website. Um, and that's great. You know, it, it allows uh, organizations uh, like my own with limited resources to be able to uh, distribute who is maintaining content on the site and such. Um, and for a lot of people to take more direct involvement in, in the content on their websites. Um, but it means that you can no longer assume that the person maintaining the content on a website uh, knows HTML and is fluent in all the latest web technologies. Um, often they have absolutely no technical abilities whatsoever. Um, and it's important to keep that in mind when you're, when you're developing these interfaces. Um, uh, so with that, uh, I thought I'd kick things off with an example of some very bad user experience design. Um, this is not a website. This is the sink in the men's room at our old offices at the California Science Center. And this plagued my life for many years, so I thought I would share it all with you. Um, anybody see what the issue is? No? Yes, every day I would come and wash my hands at the sink and instinctually the first thing I would do was reach to my right to the pump dangling over the sink basin to get some soap. But that soap dispenser was not filled ever. Um, I was expected to use the soap dispenser further to the right on the wall. Um, this is a very, very bad user experience. So. Uh, um, user experience really comes into play everywhere in our lives. And uh, once you start thinking about it, you'll notice little things like this all over the place. Um, so if this is bad user experience, then what is good user experience? So um, these are a few thoughts I had on that. Uh, I think good user experience design anticipates the user's expectations and meets them. Um, you know, don't fight what people are already thinking, because you can't really change them. So, um, with that said, it gently guides the user's actions, but without being overbearing. You don't want to beat them over the head because they'll resent you for that. But um, there's ways to give people clues as to what they should do and what they shouldn't do. And really all of it is about preventing confusion and frustration, right? So, I mean, returning to this, this did not meet my expectations at all. I expected there to be soap in the soap dispenser that was right over the sink, so it failed there. Um, and it did nothing to uh, guide my actions. You know, there's no indication that I should use the other soap dispenser um, on here at all. And uh, ultimately, this caused a great deal of confusion and frustration. So uh, fail, failure all around. Um, uh, I'd, I'd say that uh, if you compare this to, the, to a website, it would be the equivalent of, say, putting a save button in the middle of your node edit page that you weren't supposed to click because it didn't do anything because the real save button was hidden in a field set down at the bottom of the page somewhere. Um, so, uh, and actually that, that brings up a, a good point that I'd say about 90% of uh, crafting a good user experience is really showing what not or figuring out what not to show. Um, you know, this whole situation could have been solved if they just removed that soap dispenser and put a plug in the hole there, right? 
And the same thing is true on Drupal. There's a lot of stuff in Drupal interfaces that really nobody needs to show. Um, they don't need to see it. It's just going to confuse them. They don't, don't need to look at it. So removing things is a big part of it. So uh, today I thought I'd show you two uh, different websites that I'm currently working on. Um, neither of these have launched yet. Um, the first one's a little closer than the second, but uh, I would expect to find some bugs as we go through today, so please bear with me. Um, uh, and uh, I, I am, uh, this is by no means the answer to this uh, problem, so these, this is just something I'm interested in and playing with, so I'm happy to uh, have this devolve into a conversation. Um, if you guys have any questions or want to guide the conversation in any way, um, feel free to raise your hands, let me know. Um, so the first website is uh, for Manning, Lever, Bruder, and Burbridge. They're a, a small law firm in Los Angeles, uh, specializing mostly in the automobile dealer industry. And uh, the second is a new website we've been designing for the California Science Center for, the, for its uh, main website. So with that, this is the future ManningLever.com. Um, it's a relatively simple design. Uh, per client's request. Um, it has most of the stuff you would expect um, to, to find in a website, uh, information about the, the law firm, the services they offer, and the industries they serve, uh, about the attorneys, and various uh, resources for clients and such. Um, but uh, get to the fun stuff, let's go behind the scenes. There we go. Actually, start. All right. So I'm logged in as random staff member right now. Um, as you can see, I have one role, staff, um, and that gives me access to uh, the center part of the user interface for content managers here, and that is this panel. Um, this is using the admin module. Uh, if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's a handy little module for a, a building a simple interface like this. It lets you insert blocks into it. It's very convenient. Um, uh, and um, I, I do want to uh, make one distinction here when I'm talking about uh, the administrative interface. There, there will be a set of users on sites that I would give complete access to everything behind Drupal, you know, call those the system administrators or something, and I'm not going to really deal with those here because the idea is that at that point you have the keys to the kingdom and you can get in and do whatever and it's assumed that you know your way around. So really we're just talking about um, the day-to-day -day maintainers of a, of a website. Um, so in this case they can, of course, access uh, their account, log out. Um, just for fun, I put in the Who's Online block. They can see if any of their colleagues are currently working on the website. Um, then I have stuff like this. This is the recently modified content block. It's a simple view I created um, to show the last 10 things that have been uh, modified. Um, of course, the Create Content menu, so they can access any uh, content types that they're authorized to create. Um, and then the big one is the Manage Website. Uh, where I will put a variety of, of links to tools um, that they can use to manage the site. Um, the biggest one here being the manage content. Um, so I never send content uh, managers like this to the standard Drupal admin pages. Um, I completely hide the entire thing from them. I don't see any reason to send them there. It's just going to confuse them. I think it's much better to uh, craft your own pages uh, to use to, to let them maintain the site. Um, and uh, there are so many easy tools available to, to do that, um, namely views. You know, about everything on here is some variation of a view. Um, so, you know, here this is a simple table view, um, but I can control which columns are there based on the client's needs. Um, and I can have whatever exposed filters I want to help them um, find stuff so that they can, you know, uh, uh, they can search by title, they can uh, search by content type, whatever, and, and find whatever they're looking for. Um, really easy. You know, so if we go to this article, um, 
I say go to the edit page. All right, so edit pages. Um, uh, I'm using vertical tabs. Uh, I started doing that recently. There are some downsides to using vertical tabs because it can hide some stuff. Um, but ultimately, in the long run, I, f I personally have found it more convenient for dealing with uh, large amounts of content. Um, and uh, I think um, that's one case right now. I'm thinking the benefits outweigh the, the, uh, the problems with it. Uh, but that, again, will depend on the client and exactly what content you're dealing with. Um, one thing you won't see on this page, there's no um, menu tab. There's no publication options tab. There's no URL aliases tab. All of that stuff, again, hidden away. Um, I would not let any of my users near the, um, the standard node menu settings with a 10-foot pole. Um, yeah? Can you away, like, is that a separate module or uh, no, I'm, uh, I am doing some code work there There's, uh, using a hook form alter. Um, uh, so I, I mean, I do use some code on the site. There are modules, I think, that allow you to do that. And I can't name it off the top of my head, but. Um, so you're just checking using access? Uh, basically, yeah. Yeah, setting access to false. Um, and uh, if a system administrator were to log in here, they would see that stuff. So, uh, well, depending, but often they will because um, they might need access to it at some point. But for the general user, I, I hide it all away. Um, and in cases where uh, it does need to go into a menu, um, I do it programmatically behind the scenes. Um, most content types, it's, you know, if, if they're creating an attorney profile, I know it's going to go there in the menu hierarchy under attorney. So I can just have it automatically do that. I don't need to give them access to it. I don't want them seeing a list where they can choose from the primary links or the admin menu or the whatever. I mean, it's, it's just a mess. Um, and I have some cases where I may want to actually put it in multiple places within the menu hierarchy, and the Drupal menu system doesn't do that on the node edit page. But there's ways to do that yourself behind the scenes and use node references and stuff, and I can show you some of that uh, maybe later. But um, So that's a big thing. Uh, another thing I'll, I'll point out here, uh, uh, WYSIWYG interfaces. Um, you really should craft the WYSIWYG profiles for specifically what it is you are doing. Don't just throw in every button because you can. You know, it should only be there if there's a reason for it to be there. Again, don't put something you don't want someone to push right in front of them. Um, and use different ones for different purposes. So my teaser field has a um, much smaller toolbar than my body field. Because uh, with the teaser, I don't want them inserting tables in the teaser. Um, so I don't give them that option. Um, and uh, you can try to train them, but good luck. Uh, it, you know, there's some things you just cannot train. Um, if it's there, they will push it. Um, simple rule of thumb. Uh, all right, uh, what else do I want to show here? Um, yes, so if you look down at the bottom, you'll see my save button is a save draft button. So um, I'm going to bring up something that's uh, my own little uh, pet peeve about Drupal, um, which to me is very much part of the user experience, and that is publication workflow. So uh, on a standard Drupal site, uh, when you create a node, um, maybe you save it a few times, and then eventually you publish it, and it goes live. Or if you're working on a more complicated site and you want to get fancy, maybe use the workflow module so you've got a few states it goes through between draft and being published. But then at some point, it's published and it's live. And the question is, well, then what do you do um, if you need to make a change? So, And out of the box, Drupal basically gives you two options. Uh, one is you can unpublish your node, play with it, and then republish it, which is great unless it's, say, your main page, um, uh, which unpublishing that, not so good. Um, and the other option is that you edit a live website, uh, which to me just screams of pain and bad things happening. Um, and it definitely, I think, impacts the user experience, and it impacts uh, what users can, can really have access. You know? um, it means that you have to really trust the people who are editing pages on your site, which severely limits who you can give access to. Um, and it means that uh, 
uh, the people who are editing those pages, I mean, they're going to go through a whole lot of anxiety because um, uh, they're editing a live site. Question? Yeah. yeah uh, this is a little out of scope, but uh, I've run into that problem many times. And uh, one thing we did on a, a pretty big site was a lot of work. Um, we actually set up a separate server to actually do their edits on, mm -hmm. and it's hooked in with the FOI and services. Mm -hmm. So they edited everything on, on a server that's completely separate from the live server. Uh, goes through a work pro flow approval process, and when it uh, is accepted, then uh, it gets deployed to the web services. So there's a lot of uh, uh, stuff to set up, but it's a bit of an issue. Okay. Um, yes, so for the, for the video audience, um, it is possible to set up a, a completely separate staging uh, server that stuff is edited on and goes through an approval process and then is transferred over to the live server. Um, uh, and that's definitely an option. Um, uh, so on this site, uh, we wanted to be able to let everybody edit everything, but we don't want to let everybody publish everything. Um, so uh, this site, the workflow itself was fairly simple. So I used a module called revisioning, um, uh, which has worked out pretty well for this. Uh, is there anyone who's not familiar with Drupal's revisions, node revision handling? No? A few? Okay. Um, so I'll try to be quick about this. Uh, basically, you, when you're creating and editing nodes in um, uh, in Drupal, you have an option of saving your edits as a new revision. So rather than just saving over your old content, there's a table in the database called node revisions, which uh, will keep separate records for every version of the same node that you have. And then by default, the, uh, you know, also in the database, there's a nodes table, um, which has one record for every node in, in, uh, in your site. And that will have a, a pointer in it to the, the version ID um, of the latest uh, revision of that node. Um, so when you go to a page and, it, and the node loads up, it looks in the node table and says, OK, I'll grab that content from the latest um, version. And that's what gets displayed. Uh, so what revisioning does uh, is it makes it so that when you, um, when you save a new version of a node, it will save a new revision of that in the revision table, but it makes sure that the node table is still pointing at the older revision. So it separates the latest revision from the current revision. So your current revision uh, can stay published while you have a newer revision that you're still working on in draft form. Um, so handy little module. And that newer revision shows up in the revision table? Yes, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you, if you look at, and I'll look at that in a, in a minute, if you look at the uh, revision, the list of revisions, you'll, you'll see the current one, which is pending, and, and the, or the current one and the, the latest one, which is pending. Um, in fact, we can just save a draft now. Uh, okay. Uh, and you'll see I've got various options here. If I list all revisions, so this shows me all the revisions of this particular node. Um, and it, revisions is great because it allows you to keep a history of all the changes to the node, um, and you can always revert back to an older one. Uh, so it's, it's handy to have around. Um, and you can see here that uh, you know, the, the latest one is in draft pending publication, and the one before that is the current revision, which is published. And this is all out of the um, Yeah, it takes a little um, configuring. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple changes I've, I've made here on my own, and not to this uh, part of it, but things like the, actually changing the name on that button to save draft instead of save. Um, that's something I did. Uh, again, hook form alter. Um, and little things like that can make a really big difference. You know, save, it's vague, it's not meaningful. Save draft, I know exactly what's happening. Um, so anytime you can uh, get in and make those those little tweaks to things, um, those little touches, they can really go a long way to improving the user experience. You know, they might not notice it, but it'll make them less frustrated in the long run. You might get into this, but when a staff user saves a draft, like a new revision, do the moderators who get to, who are allowed to publish see a, a view in there managing content of what new drafts have been published and stuff? Um, so 
question is, is do, will the managers who can publish see a list of the things which are pending? Yeah. I can. Um, on this site right now, I, I don't have one list, um, but that uh, manage content, and I'll show that, the, the manage content list can be sorted um, or can be filtered to just show pending content. Um, so really, I'm keeping it all there. In this particular case, I didn't um, find it necessary to have multiple lists. Uh, on the Science Center site, it's a little different. Uh, that's more complicated with the workflow, and I'll, I'll try to show a little of that as well. Um, yeah, so that's a uh, good question. I, uh, let's do that now. So I'm going to um, log out um, as my test user here. Uh, computer's a little slow this morning. This was so snappy yesterday when I was playing with this. Because I don't. Huh? That is quite possible. It was at the bar last night. Toolbar module. Yeah. It makes the like shortcuts. It's similar to the D7 shortcut, which is part of the toolbar door. Okay. No, no, I haven't. I haven't used that one. All right. I'm just gonna see if it'll. You've been around with D7 and the Workbench. Can you talk about Workbench? Um, I have not played with Workbench. I've looked at Workbench. Uh, I haven't really done much with D7, um, which I guess I should say that, yes, both of these sites are D6 sites, um, just because of when they were started. Uh, and um, so, yeah, so everything I'm showing here is, is Drupal 6. Uh, many of the same ideas will apply with Drupal 7, but, um, yeah. So uh, uh, the workbench module in Drupal 7, from what, I see, what's, from what I've seen, is awesome. And, um, and I really wish it was around, you know, like, a year before it was, um, and, and you'll see why uh, when we get to the Science Center site, um, where we're trying to build essentially some of the same stuff. All right, so uh, now I'm logged in as Joe Berberich, who is the um, named partner at Manning Lever, um, and as you can see, he has a couple more roles there. In addition to being staff, he's also a publisher, and he's a user admin. Um, so, uh, short of being a full administrator on the site where you can get into all the Drupal-y stuff, um, he's got the highest permissions that you can get. Uh, so if we go to our recently modified content uh, block here, I can see, oh, okay, there's a pending revision of, of uh, this um, article that was edited. So I'll go to that. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's their terminology. Um. The word publish is the Drupal flag. Yes. I'm going to blame the video software for this. It's got to be doing something. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, all right, so here we are. And now you can see that it's a publisher coming to view this page. I have a few more options, uh, including publish this. Uh, so I'm going to say, okay, this is great. I can view the article. It looks good. I will publish it. Yay. Um, and now you see, again, looking at the list of revisions, um, now, what was the latest revision is now the current published revision, um, and the older one was archived. Um, so I, again, have a complete record of all of the published revisions, previously published revisions um, of this page. Um, and uh, oh man. <laughs> is really slow. 
Uh, there we go. All right, so going back here, um, this is actually is a modification that I made to this um, using uh, some menu hooks within my own module, but adding these sub-tabs on this page. So just browsing around the site, I've given publishers the ability to publish or unpublish content a little more easily. Um, the main reason I added this actually is uh, to make it easier when a, a publisher first creates a node. As soon as that node loads up, they'll have a publish this button that they can press if they want to publish it immediately. So just a matter of convenience. Um, if we open up the admin tools again, I'll go to manage website, and you can see we have a few more options here. Um, uh, with the, the publisher rights, um, they can access many more tools for uh, organizing and editing content on the site. Um, uh, let me show one example here. Um, that's that. So this is, if it loads, uh, is the uh, useful links page on the site. There we go. Um, it's uh, common, I think, on many sites. It's a list of, of links to various websites with uh, resor legal resources that their clients and potential clients might be interested in. Um, you know, each one of these is, uh, represents a, a separate node with a title and a link and a little description field. Um, and uh, taxonomy term to categorize it. So it can be in this list of uh, categorized list of, of links here. Um, now the, uh, the clients uh, wanted to be able to order the categories in any arbitrary order. They wanted to be able to order the links within those categories in any arbitrary order. And they wanted to be able to edit the names of the categories uh, at any time. Um, and create new categories and such. Uh, creating new categories was easy. It's, uh, if, you, if we looked at the, the, um, the node edit uh, page there, it's, it's a free tagging um, system, so they can type in whatever category they want when they're creating a node. Um, and uh, it'll, if it exists, it'll pull it up as they start typing. It's autocomplete field. Um, but they can add new ones easily. But they need some way to, to manage those, and um, there was no way that I was going to let them anywhere near the uh, taxonomy management pages that Drupal provides. So um, I created some of my own admin pages for this. Uh, if we go to Organize Useful Links. Uh, so to begin with, um, they can edit the category names. Um, this, again, is a view, uh, and it's using a module uh, called, oh boy, uh, Views Embed Form, ah, came right to it, um, which is a nifty little module I found that lets you uh, create a form, um, which does take some coding, I should say, but uh, you can create a form which is then embedded in a view as a field within that view. Um, and it can pull other information from the view. So in this case, I have a, a fairly simple little form um, that pulls in the category name uh, for each row of this taxonomy view. Uh, and I can edit it. So if I wanted to change this to, say, California Laws and hit Change Name, then when the form's processed, it's going to update the taxonomy uh, table behind the scenes and uh, change the name of that term. Um, so if I go back here, refresh the page, and we have California laws. All right. Um, there's also uh, uh, category order page. There we go. Um, this is using uh, another wonderful module, which I use in many different ways, uh, called draggable views. It's a different views display. It gives you this table with these uh, handles, and you can just drag and drop the rows in whatever order you want. I click Save Order. And it is instantly updated. Uh, 
Um, you, uh, so the uh, draggable views provides a um, order field that the view can access. Um, it also has a handler that lets you use a CCK field if you want to hold an order. Uh, and then I just, when I create the view where it's all listed, I sort based on that order, yeah. So now again, reload this page, and now federal law is on top. Um, uh, I also have a page to uh, delete categories. Um, this is, uh, if it comes up, uh, using something called views bulk operations. Um, although this is a pretty simple operation. One of these days. Always during the presentation. So um, Yeah, so there's, the question is, is there a way to send an email to the user when something is published? Yes, there is. Um, I'm not doing that on this particular site because it wasn't something that the clients uh, wanted or, or needed. Um, uh, but it is possible you could use uh, the rules module, for instance, to rules. Um, and you can set up uh, a rule to um, when, when something changes state like that, to it'll trigger sending an email. And, I think there's a few a few ways to accomplish that. Is this a network issue? All right, I'm going to try turning off. Oh, that is very possible. All right, but yeah, everything I'm accessing is local. All right, all right. Well, I've, I've turned off the Wi-Fi for now, so hopefully that'll work. Uh, much better. Uh, all right, yeah. So this, um, they can just check whichever terms they want. Hit delete term, and it'll delete that. Um, I've added this uh, field over here to show them how many published um, art, uh, links are using that um, right now. This isn't the perfect system, and I would love to have a little bit better validation and stuff in there, but. Um, uh, it was what I could do in the time I had. Um, uh, and the idea is that basically if there's a number there, you probably don't want to delete it because some link somewhere is published with that term. Um, uh, uh, this gets a little bit crazier. Again, I'm using draggable views here. This lets me order links within any category. Um, so I have an exposed filter where I can pick whichever category I want. It'll show me the links in that category. I can shuffle them around, save order, and again, it'll be reflected on the page. Um, so very handy. Um, and I use uh, um, many variations of draggable views all over the place. The same system is used to manage um, you know, lists of articles and documents and other things on the site. Um, the, the services, again, ordering uh, these services within the categories, ordering the categories themselves. Um, ordering uh, lists of attorneys uh, within the menu system. Um, you know, so if I uh, drop Joe down one and save the order and then uh, um, go look uh, here in the list, Joe's down below Robert now. You know, or if I go to the main attorneys page, again, every list that, that uses that, he's going to be in that order. Um, and speaking of views bulk operations, uh, if we go to the manage content page now as a publisher, it looks a little bit different. Um, it's, uh, it still has the same basic table and uh, sort filters, but uh, now I'm using views bulk operations. So as a publisher, um, I can click off whichever um, uh, items on the page I want, and I have several options to choose from for things I can do to that, including publish the most recent pending revision. So if I've got a long list of articles and I just want to check them off and publish them all at once, I can do that um, using this form. Um, this was using a, a nifty little trick I found where if you have two page views that are both at the same path, um, the first one you have that the, uh, the user has access to, that's the one that's going to be shown to them. 
Um, so this is the first view listed, but only publishers have access to it. And then I have a second view at the same path that uh, just staff have access to. Um, so the staff see the regular table, the publishers see views bulk operations table. Um, so it was a handy little trick. Uh, so um, I think that was about all I was going to show on this site right now, if, uh, unless anybody has any questions. Uh, and we're, we're running very low on time, unfortunately. So um, I'll, I'll uh, just jump in and show you a little bit about the California Science Center site. Um, see how far we can get with this. Uh, so this is very, very much in development. Um, uh, so there, there are still many bugs to be worked out. Um, and the template, the design itself, has not been fully implemented within the template. So uh, this gives you a rough idea of what the look and feel of the site will be. Um, and uh, I don't know if you look at random pages within, inside. Um, so uh, th this had a um, had much more stringent requirements when it came to publication workflow. Um, uh, it's uh, a large institution. There's lots of different departments. Um, we really wanted to be able to uh, spread out the management of the site as much as we could, so that people enable people who are ultimately responsible for the, and involved with the content to manage it themselves on the site. Um, but uh, with that in mind, we had, in order to sort of get this accepted within the institution, there had to be a, a fairly strict uh, approval system, um, both for creating content, but also for editing already published content. Um, and actually, I can show you, um, this is what we were after. This is the workflow for content on the site. Um, so when it gets created, it can get saved in a draft state. Uh, it goes through a review state. Um, it can be submitted for approval, and it'll be pending approval. All of these are sort of unpublished pending content states. Um, uh, once it's approved, it goes into an approved state. Um, we uh, uh, allow uh, scheduling publication of content. Um, so we can have content sitting in an approved state just waiting until the right time before it'll automatically be published. Um, or if you don't schedule it, then it would immediately go into its published state. Um, and uh, at some point, if you ever want to pull it down, you can archive it. Um, so the way our system works, um, at any given time for one node, we can have a, re a revision of the node that is in either the published or archived state, um, something that's already been approved. At the same time, you can have a newer revision of that same node that is bouncing around in any of these three pending content states, you know, waiting to be approved. And you can have as many revisions as you want that have already been approved that are just sitting there waiting to be published. Um, so I can have a published page. I can make some edits and uh, for maybe I have an event one Saturday. Um, and I can set it up so that on Saturday morning, I'll have something that gets published. And if that gets approved, it goes and sits in the approved queue waiting to be published. And then immediately, I can create another revision and edit it for what I want to happen Saturday evening after the event's over. Um, and get that approved, and that'll be sitting there waiting. And then Saturday morning, boom, the first one gets published. Saturday evening, the second one gets published, and I'm home, you know, drinking a glass of wine, not worrying about it. So um, this is what we were after. And uh, creating this in Drupal has uh, been an interesting process um, and really taken, I think, the bulk of our development time. Um, so let me log in. Um, so when I log in here, uh, I get this uh, admin bar up here, and this is the heart of our uh, interface, is this uh, admin panel on the side here. Um, we're not using the admin module this time. This is um, a, uh, a custom region within the theme that we can dump whatever we want into, uh, and it only shows up if you're an authenticated user that has the appropriate permissions. Um, and it's really meant to sort of walk you through what's going on and, and make it very clear to the person uh, who's, who's viewing the page what it is they're looking at. Um, so here for this IMAX features page, for instance, um, it shows that I'm, I'm viewing the published version of the page. And it tells me when it was published. It also tells me that there's a draft revision of this page. And that's a link. So I can click on that, and then I'm viewing the draft revision myself. Um, so I can compare the two and go back and forth. Um, so I'm logged in as uh, our exhibit writer. 
So let me go to the exhibit section. Now, let's say I'll go to the Air and Aircraft page. Um, so uh, she has the rights to, to edit this particular section. Um, the way the workflow works, um, every content type in the system can have a workflow, a, a default workflow associated with it. Um, and if I look under Show Workflow Users, it'll tell me who has what role within the workflow that's governing this particular page. Um, we have four different roles. We have editors. Uh, you can, of course, edit the content. We have reviewers, um, and in this case, people are notified. So if something's submitted for review, all the reviewers get an email notification saying that it's waiting for them. Um, we have approvers who can, of course, approve the content, um, and then we threw in something called overriders, uh, which basically have all the rights and privileges of an approver, but none of the responsibility. Um, so they don't get any notifications. They don't have an approval queue or anything. Um, but if the approvers are out of town um, they, and something needs to be published, uh, you can always go to them. Um, uh, so uh, every content type has a default workflow assigned to it, um, but it's actually editable on a per node basis. So as an editor, I can edit the workflow and I can add people. So maybe this page uh, has something really important to our education department in it and I want to add an editor or some reviewers from that department to um, look at the content. Um, so an editor can edit editors and reviewers. Um, a system administrator on the site can actually edit approvers and can completely change the default workflow assigned to a specific node. Um, and that comes in handy in many ways, which I, I, I don't you know, have time to go into right now, but, um, but uh, it's worked out well. So uh, if I edit this page, um, this is something that I, I fought for, again, user experience issue. I was looking at the published version of the page, um, and I hit the edit button. So what is it that I should be editing when I go to the edit form? Should it be populated with what's on the published version when there's already a more recent draft? Um, and originally, uh, it just it would show you what was on the published version, and there would be a little note at the top saying there's a more recent revision. Um, and to me, that wasn't enough. And I was sure that people would get confused. So really, we want to hold their hands and, again, guide the users to the right thing. So they can revert to the older revision if they want. But 99% of the time, they're going to want to edit the latest. Yeah? And when you say revert, does that eliminate the work in progress? Uh, no. In this case, in this site, every time you save anything, you're always creating a new revision. So if you revert, then really what you're doing is copying content from the old revision and creating a new revision starting with that same, huh? Yes, yes. And there's still the one that you were working on. Exactly. Um, so again, vertical tabs. Um, you can see I've got save as draft button. There's also submit for review, submit for approval. Um, so a little more complicated here. Um, No, those will, in this case, that, they'll, save, they'll save it and submit it. Um, but we didn't want to require that people always save a draft. Um, so you can make an edit and immediately submit it for approval um, or submit it for review. And some of this stuff, in this case, we're leaving up to individual department policies and stuff like that. So they may have cases where they don't, or departments that are small enough or whatever, they don't necessarily want to have to go through a review stage. But we have that as an option. Um, and they'll have to work out among themselves how they want to do it. Uh, and the way the site's built up, basically, is it's the editor's job to push something through the workflow and the approver's job to make sure that anybody who needs to approve it is okay with it before they click that approve button. Um, uh, I, I do want to show this. So this is a case where um, uh, I, I need to give the editors the ability to place something within the menu hierarchy um, uh, on the site. Not any place within the menu hierarchy, though. I only want them, you know, this is in our air and space section. I only want them to be able to place this uh, someplace within the air and space section of the site. Um, so I don't want an air and space page ending up in the plan your visit section of the site or even in a different exhibit gallery 
um, section. So, uh, but I also, as I said, don't want to give them access to the menu system. Um, so instead, I'm using uh, a node reference field here. Um, and I'm using a view to um, specify exactly which nodes they're allowed to choose. Uh, in this case, they can pick any other node that is also governed by the, um, the Air and Space exhibit workflow. Um, so it keeps them within that section. And then when this is saved, I've got some code behind the scenes that will um, take whatever node was referenced here and make that the parent node within the menu hierarchy and add it to the menu system. Um, other fun things, uh, sidebar. Uh, I'm using Display Suite on this site, uh, and one of the things with Display Suite is you can uh, take some stuff within the node itself and have it made available as a block. Uh, so I, I made something so I can give them a text field where if they have something that they want to go in the sidebar on this page and just on this page, um, they can uh, enter it here, and if we uh, cancel out of here, and it'll show up in the sidebar. Um, so little things like that, you know, make people's day a little nicer. Um, uh, what else can I show you? I mean, various other things, m more info. This is mostly for my benefit and for troubleshooting and stuff, but if people want it, they can see what the node ID is and what content type it is that they're looking at. Um, editing the publication schedule. Oh, that's not working right now. I said there would be bugs. There you go. Uh, and uh, if we view the revision history, so this shows everything that this node has been through. Um, the status, if something's in brackets, that means at one point it had that state. That's essentially the highest level that that revision ever made. So we have a bunch that uh, used to be published, um, some review, draft, so-and-so, and now we have more recently our published revision and then still the newer draft revision. Um, now looking at this page as the editor, um, I can go back and edit it or I can submit it for review or submit it for approval. So let me... Uh, submit this for approval. Now I can see I'm looking at the approval pending version. There's still the, the newer published version available. Um, and if I log out as Kim, and let's see, log in as uh, Ken Phillips, who is our Air and Space Curator. Um, and, oh, look, approval queue. I have one item. So I'm going to go and look. Oh, the Air and Aircraft page. Um, oh, I should say that that was a view. Um, and, again, I've set up several views um, in this case with uh, various queues to show what's pending, what, what do I have that I'm editing that's uh, in a draft form, or um, what have I submitted for approval, what am I supposed to be approving. Um, so if Ken goes to this page, uh, he has the approve or reject buttons. If he rejects it, it'll get bumped back to draft, and the editors will get a notification letting them know that they got to fix it. Um, if it gets approved, it goes live. Um, uh, a comment field, uh, yeah, comments are in the plans, um, but uh, that's being postponed uh, for time reasons. But the idea was eventually that we do want to keep all communication about a node uh, within the system so that reviewers, editors, approvers, they can all have a conversation about any node right here within the system, and we've got a record of everything that's you know, happened and all the discussions surrounding the content. Uh, right, yeah, so, so my plan for it what, is that um, every comment that's submitted will be tagged with the revision that it is re referring to, whatever the, the uh, current published version was at the time. Um, and with that, you, because we're keeping all of those, you can always link back and go and, and view that revision. Um, oh, I forgot to mention, so in this case, uh, Ken is both um, a approver but also an editor and a reviewer on this page. Um, 
that's not necessarily the case. We have some cases, our uh, VP of marketing, for instance, um, who is one of those very, very non-technical people and really has no interest in editing these pages. And I don't know that we want him to. So, um, you know, his staff are going to be doing all the editing and we know that that's the case. So he's not going to be an editor on, on his content. Um, uh, he will be a, an approver, but at that point all he has to do is log in and he would only have the approve or reject buttons on that. And he just has to push that button. Um, so it's really gauging on a case-by-case -case basis uh, what you want to do with people. Um, so in this case, if, if uh, Ken approves it, um, it's approved, and there we go. Um, and we are running out of time. Are, are there any last questions? Yes? This is, uh, it's Drupal 6, and this is a custom module that we're building. I am hoping that we will be able to um, submit it on Drupal.org. Uh, right now, it's very, very tied to this particular site. Um, and I'm hoping that we can abstract it a little bit and, uh, and get all you guys to help us develop it. So um, that is the ultimate goal. Any other questions? Um, uh, I, I will leave you with uh, one last image, uh, Tron. Just uh, remember, always fight for the users. Um, they are important. <laughs> and uh, with, with that, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's been fun.